Welcome to the methods of analyzing charts. Now, people always argue which method is the better, but to be honest, there is no such thing as best. You must know all the three in order to become a consistent and successful trader. If I want to give you the oldest and most common example, it's like having a three legs stool. If one of them is weak, there is a high chance that the person who sits on the stool will fall and hurt himself. Now, do we want that? Of course we don't. That's the same situation with analysis as well. You need to be ready with every scenario possible on the market because there is no two same situations. Each and every is different and unique and you have to know how to react to different situations. Let me repeat this part because it's very important. There is no two same situations. Each and every is different and unique and you have to know how to react to different situations. So let's see those three approaches. The first one is technical analysis. It's an approach when the trader executes positions through historical events on the chart. It could provide an outstanding view if one puts its time into tens of thousands of hours of training. The next one is fundamental analysis. It is the approach of analyzing a given company's share, an economy or a currency by simply reading between the lines. Because guys, one thing is for sure, the most money has been and will be made between the lines. Now this approach requires lots of practice and a good understanding of the economical impacts on the given instrument or company. And last but not least, sentiment analysis which is the newest type of aspect of approach. It requires a person's ability to understand how other individuals react to different surroundings. It's more like psychology. But let's start one by one. The first one is technical analysis. Technical analysts firmly believe that the market information is already reflected in the price and that's how they want to make a fortune. They act with a belief of history tends to repeat itself. Basically, technical analysis is a method of evaluating the underlying instrument or company in the hope of forecasting their future movement by analyzing statistics through trading volume, volatility, trading patterns, candlestick patterns, and many other things. Technical analysts usually use indicators to predict a given instrument's activity on the market. Consequences are made by checking out historical movement. As you can see, there are many, many indicators such as RSI, MACD, moving averages and lots of other ones. When it comes to volatility meters, we have ATR, Bollinger Bands or Keltner Channels. With patterns, we have head and shoulders, double tops and bottoms and flags and many more, which requires you to practice as much as you can. Technical analysts are looking for these similar patterns that have happened in the past and will happen in the future as well. They check key support and resistance levels where something happened with the given instrument and they try to trade around those areas. They use charts to analyze the possible outcomes of a given instrument. They spend hours and hours and hours of analyzing and sometimes that's why they miss a very good opportunity. The interesting thing is that as more and more people use this method, these patterns, indicator signals and the other things become self-fulfilling as the more money is put into one direction, the higher the chance to go that way. Now the reason this is my favorite type of analysis is because it's subjective. This is more than just learning some indicators. It's a magical, enthusiastic and beautiful part of trading. It's like art. Later we will go into in-depth with all the possible tools that we can use to be a professional trader, but believe me, the less, the better. Now let's continue with fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is another approach to earn some pips on the market. Fundamental analysis analyzes the health and performance of the underlying asset or firm by going through its key numbers and economic indicators. In other words, it analyzes political, social and economic status and outcomes of a given country or company that can affect the supply and demand of the specific instrument. As supply and demand determines the price, it actually makes sense. 
The hardest part of fundamental analysis is that there are so many information to process and sometimes it is the smallest information that you might have missed or haven't heard of will affect that asset. If it's not enough, there are news and information that the average person can't even get access as they are either so expensive, like a Bloomberg subscription, or only the higher one person knows about it. Basically, the idea behind fundamental analysis is to measure a country's current and future economic outlook, its performance, and from this information try to figure out if the country can be stronger or weaker and how it will affect its currency. Simply, if the economy is good, the currency gains strength, and if the economy is not blooming but having issues or stagnating, then the currency loses value. And what I said is only a dream scenario, so wake up. It's not like that anymore. With the pressure of high net worth individual people and arbitrage systems, sometimes the total opposite happens. Later we will speak about interest rate changes and their influence on the currency central banks spe speeches and how to analyze other news and what to do when the news are coming out for now learn one thing so far both is coming valuable to know about the technical and the fundamental analysis here you can find some of the most important news the nfp the ecb when president Draghi speaks the Fed, when Chair Yellen testifies, or the FOMC, which is the Federal Open Market Committee. Let's move on to sentiment analysis. As I just described, the first two options, we came to the last one. The reason why it's important is because every single trader is an individual. And what do individuals do? They think differently from each other. That's why we need to analyze all the possible outcomes. We need to analyze the forms and price levels, the news and speeches, and last but not least, we need to think with the crowd and go against them. As retail traders can move the market because they have no exposure enough to put pressure on the market, then you have to think what the crowd wants and what the big investors want. You need to check if the market is bullish or bearish, if the news that will come can affect the given situation on the market, how powerful the news are, and many many other things. If one can gauge the market, then this indi individual has a tool that can help him earn money on the long run and let's be honest, this is what we want. 